Thank you for joining us for another session of dedication. Fans, remember the Bay City Rollers, the only Bay City Rollers themed podcast in the world, hosted by Bay City Roller fan events. I'm Laura, and co hosting is Suze. Hey, Suze. Hey, Laura. How's it going? Good. How you doing? Uh, recovering. Are you still in recovery mode from NYC? I, I think we're still kind of riding the wave of New York City a little bit. Yep, the purple wave. It was. So uh, what did you think of the whole weekend? It was just amazing. Emotional, wonderful, too fast. Yes. Didn't have a minute, more than a minute to sit with anyone really, but it was exhilarating. Um, the most surprising thing for me was when we turned that corner and the fans' reaction. I mean, not the fans. <laughs> the crowd's <laughs> reaction. Spectators. I think they are fans now. The crowd's reaction was just I did, I did not expect that at all. That was really moving and wonderful and warm and fuzzy. And hey, I think it inspired us to do it again next year. So woohoo, here we come, New York. I, I cannot wait. And I've already penciled in my calendar. September 1st is when I get to register us to march again. So Absolutely. I am very excited about that. Good job, Laura. You did an outstanding job team leading that that was a huge undertaking so mwah, kudos well, my girl thank you and thank you to you and all my fabulous team members it was it was definitely a team effort and uh i can't thank wait you. to work with all you guys again for next year it's, yeah, uh, it's gonna be fun we've already started so <laughs> yeah. we can't control ourselves <laughs> i know anyway. we weren't even we weren't even two weeks post parade and we're already working on next year but i know it's, uh it's fun so Today, um, we have a great a great guest today, and I'm a little bit excited. Uh, I took the lead on this one, and I got to do the interviewing uh, with some help from Suze, and it was, it was a lot of fun and really interesting. Our guest today is Sam Mokhtari, and I think some of our listeners may have already started to see Sam's postings that he's done on various Bay City Roller related Facebook pages because um, Sam was a longtime promoter and tour manager for Les when Les was in Japan and he actually did six sold out tours with Les. Wow. So, which is amazing. Mm. And it just goes to show how how popular Les was in Japan and how dedicated the fans are that he, they wanted him to keep coming back. Oh, yeah. That's that's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. And well, because of the touring that Sam did with Les, especially the last tour that he completed back in 2020, uh, Sam decided to start working on a very special project, which is a photo book of Les's last complete tour in Japan. Um, I guess after Les's passing, Sam came across thousands of photos that had been taken uh, during that tour, and Sam decided that he wanted to do something to not not only just honor Les, but to give something to the fans. And because these, these are pictures that fans have not seen yet, yeah, no one's seen them. That's right. And so he he knew that there that people would really love to see these pictures. So he started a Kickstarter campaign to fund this project. And we also have to note that. This project has the blessing of Les's wife, Peko, and their son, Jube, yep. which is a really nice thing. And uh, we have Sam with us today. He's going to tell us all about the project and how the fans and supporters are a major part of making this book actually happen. So let's get Sam on the line. And are you ready to talk to Sam, Suze? Yeah, we're all ready. We'll, we'll plug him in. All right. All right. Thanks. Hi, Sam. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks Hi, so Sam. much for having me. You're welcome. It's uh, We're really excited about interviewing you and talking about um, your relationship with Les and definitely about the book as well. But I would like to start from the beginning and um, ask, before you even met Les, had you heard about the Bay City Rollers? Were you a fan? Oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm British, you know, I'm from uh, Newcastle upon Tyne, which is not far from Scotland. And, you know, we're, we're music loving people. And I think it's hard to be a music loving British person and not know the Bay City Rollers. Okay. So, of course, I knew Les and I knew the records. 
But that said, I was born in 1985, so I missed the roller media days by quite a long time, to be fair. Sorry about, you know, but, you know, it, to be honest, so for me, you know, I wasn't growing up in the heyday and, you know, sure. uh, had, had all that around me. And so really for me, I became a fan through working with Les and Alan. Um, and actually, you know, for me, having fun with those guys on the road, that's how I became a fan. Okay. I hear a song like something like, um, you know, I only want to be with you, or we call it Fatari Dake no Deito in Japanese, it's got a different name. But okay. when that song plays, you know, if I catch that somewhere, it just brings back a lot of memories of great tours and shows and the fun we had putting on those concerts. And, uh, you know, that's why I'm a fan, you know. That Well, you know what? There are some, some people uh, among our the fan base that really did become fans like later on and not necessarily mm -hmm. during the heyday. But I think that's kind of great because the music definitely appeals to a lot of different generations. Mm. And, and there was kind of, oh, sorry. There was kind of nope. like a resurgence. Um, their songs were in television shows like Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Love Actually in the movie. So it's, you know, it's bringing on younger fans, which is really awesome. Yeah, I, Love Actually is a, is one that a lot of people bring up saying, you know, that, oh, that's that's how I know the Bay City Rollers out of, out of, you know, people a bit younger than me even. They know it. So, yeah, that's a really good example of, um, you know, it becoming into popular culture again and people becoming more aware of it. But for me, as a concert promoter, you know, when you work with people that you like and you enjoy working with them, you you wish them the best all the time and you want everything they do to be good. And it just means it's somehow... I, I can remember the best concerts where I've sat, stood at the back of the hall and everybody's singing and on their feet and having a great time. And you're looking at those guys on stage and, you know, they're performing and they're, they're doing this great thing. And you just feel so lucky that you were able to be part of that. And uh, that, that yeah. really, that, that really, I'm even saying it now, I'm getting a little bit uh, yeah. <laughs> goosebumps you're, thinking about it. It's, uh, you're making something. me emotional saying Sorry. those words. <laughs> Because that's so true. Well, because we're we're the ones in that audience seeing the same thing you are and feeling those same feelings. So that's mm. really beautiful. Mm. It re it really is. Now, how how and where did you meet Les? Well, um, uh, oh, it's a good question. I mean, I, I'm, as you guys know, as um, as Les McKeown fans and basically Rollers fans, that they're, they're truly some of the most passionate and loyal fans. And it's actually thanks to them that I came to work with Les in the first place because um, I was running a company in Japan. It was a crowdfunding company for live music. And what that means is that the fans could request any artist by coming to our website. And if there were enough people who wanted to see it, we had an obligation as a company to try and make that concert happen. Oh, and okay. Yeah, it was kind of unusual That's format. Amazing. Yeah, it was in the world to, to do this thing. It was, it was back in 2013 we started and um, yeah, the Japanese basic rollers fans found out about the company. And soon I was just getting swarmed with hundreds and hundreds of requests saying, you know, you know, we want Les's basic rollers to come and play Japan, you know. Um, and he was by far the most requested artist. So I'm for not me, surprised. The, yeah, yeah. It was it was it was really, as we say, off the hook. It was incredible. Yes. And um, yeah, it, 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 the Japanese public had spoken as far as I was concerned worked with him and I reached out to him. And I think some people might not appreciate this, you know, because obviously, you know, they're originally a 70s artist. So people think, oh, you know, they, they, the 70s music promotion style is different. But Les is actually really open minded about technology that you could see him using Periscope. You could see him, you know, yep. shooting a lot of video, talking to his fans. He would always, if it meant he could connect to his fans, he would try it out. And so yeah. we were coming to him with a totally new format for doing a show. It wasn't guaranteed to happen. It was only if the, the fans pledged for the tickets, they yeah. would happen. But he mm -hmm. loved what we were trying to do. He said, yeah, I want to do it. Let's make it happen. So we did massive success. And, you know, the first time I actually met Les then was literally when he stepped off the plane for our first tour together. In Japan. In Japan. That's right. In Japan, and what, year, yeah. what year was that? Do you remember? That was early 2015. Wow. Okay. So you wouldn't you wouldn't lump less like into the oldie circuit category because he was, even though the songs would technically maybe be considered on the oldies channels, he he kept it new, if that makes sense. Like Yeah, I, I I know what you mean. Yeah. I mean he, he didn't perform the songs like they were performed in the seventies. 
he did a Correct. total yeah. restyling of them. Yeah, that, that's right. And and with his his legendaries as the lineup, yeah, they always did bring something new, and he would always put in. But I felt I always felt like his show was very how's the word mature in the sense that um, he knew how to to put a bit of everything in his show. So he had something new, he had something classic. Mm-hmm. Um, he he put special things in for the Japanese audience, which he knew they really like. Um, so it was it, it was always a, a show which had a bit of everything. Yeah, um, and some, some, yeah, and I got to say, sometimes just working with a lot of different artists, a lot of artists aren't very sensitive. It's strange to say you'd think they should be because they're they're only there because of their audience. But a lot of them they have an agenda, and that's the only thing they want to do. So they show up and say, oh. I, I want. I just want to play my new album, and I don't care that people want to hear my classic songs. And Les would never do that, you know. Even if he was promoting a new single or a new record, he had something you wanted to talk about. He put a bit of everything in, and and he, you know, as a promoter, that's that's the kind of artist you really want to work with because fans go away of all backgrounds. They all go away really happy and want to see it again. So yeah, he knows what they want, and he gives them what they want. What mm-hmm. what they want but really without compromising what he wants as well. That's true. He, he always got, you know, it, it's it's a funny thing. I think about a radio a radio DJ. I always say this one, you know, a great DJ um, expresses themselves during their show, but only 20% of the show is their expression. The other 80%, they realize if they don't play enough of what people want, they won't get to express themselves because no one will listen. Oh, and that's true. That's the art, you know. Yeah. Uh, of knowing that balance what you sometimes get is that person who shows up the, the worst wedding dj you can ever have <laughs> they show up and they play a hundred percent what they want to hear and not what the bride and groom want to hear yeah. you know it would be a nightmare so you know les les uh, understood this very well you know he's a consummate entertainer with so much so much experience and definitely um, who i was a joy to work with so once you met him in 2015 and you did that first show with him, how did your relationship with him and his band grow from there? Well, interesting question. I mean, that those tours, I was, you know, as the promoter, I was, I wasn't just the promoter. I did a lot of different things on that, that those tours. So basically I would book him, I'd market the concerts, I'd sell the tickets. Uh, I organized and actually produced the tours um, along with, um you know um his team and um i even went out on the road with the band so i was actually the tour manager as well um you know helping them get by in japan and making sure they understood what was going on um and basically making sure everything was running smoothly so when you go on a tour like that you're really in close contact with all of the band members yes and you get to know everyone really well and so I, I think that was really important working working with Les. And uh, this is something I tend to write a small amount about in the in the book in my notes. You know, um, the the Bay City Rollers. Anyone who, who knows their history knows that they 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 had they were surrounded by some people who didn't really look after them well and took advantage yeah. of them at times. And understandably, when you've had experiences like that, trust is going to be in short supply sometimes. And, you know, with someone like Les, you have to earn that trust, you know. And Absolutely. Be, yeah. And, and being on the road and being close to him and, you know, him seeing that this guy's not ripping me off. This guy's fair. You know, he's looking out for me. That helped to grow closer and for us to do more and more each time. So the first tour was very small. And actually, the band were quite confused. They were like, why are we only playing like a couple of shows? You know, shouldn't we play some more? But I think that was because... Les didn't know me, you know, and he wanted to see how is it working with this guy. And after the first tour, you sort of, I think he realized, yes, this 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 works. So mm-hmm. we ended up expanding for the second tour, doing more and more dates, and we continued to grow that tour until uh, the last one we did together in 2020. And actually, um, we had, you know, again, this is something I intend to write about in in the in the, the photo book, in my notes, and talk about what plans we have for the future because we had lots of ideas about what we wanted to do next you know how could we go bigger different cities uh different kinds of um events for fans we did a lot of different kinds of events over the years and yeah i I feel like that close contact working closely together that's what really allowed us to to um to have a you know a great a great relationship oh definitely i have a question oh yeah (laughs) please the, the first tour the 2015 you said 2015 yeah 
was that the one that included Alan or was it just less the first time? Oh, great. It wasn't the first one wasn't Alan wasn't there on the first one. Uh, Alan was there in 2016 and 2017, I believe. Right. Yeah, okay. right. Uh, I, 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 I might have to double check that. Definitely 2017, 2016. I'm, I'm um, yeah, I think 2016 was the so yes, there, there was the the re, obviously there was the reunion shows happening in the UK. Yes. Yes. And there was talk, you know, would we do the reunion show in, in Japan? Um, but sadly, for various reasons, this, um, you, probably, you guys probably know from the story oh, yeah. that came out in the UK, um, oh, yeah. that yes. it didn't happen, unfortunately, you know. Yeah, what, a that, loss. what a loss for them. Absolutely. <laughs> I, would, I would have loved to, to, have, um, to have, have been involved in a reunion show. It would have been great. But uh, That would have been very successful yeah. in Japan, for oh, sure. Yeah, oh, definitely. Brilliant. Definitely. Now, since you spent a few years with Les and his band and working so closely with him, do you have any um, do you have any funny or memorable stories you want to share with us? One oh, or this two? Is, this is such a difficult question because you're <laughs> sure you've heard the old adage, what happens on tour stays on tour. This <laughs> well, is not, on podcast, <laughs> not on podcast. Not on podcast. Sam, whatever no. you say on the podcast stays we'll just stay on, on the, the podcast. podcast. Oh, is that, is that, <laughs> that's how it works, is it? <laughs> uh, oh, uh, but, uh, no, there's a lot of funny stories, but I, I have to say I'm afraid I'm, I'm really sworn to secrecy about many of them. Okay. But uh, I guess if something I would be allowed to say on this this show, um, I guess, you know, just, 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 just funny odd things which would happen. I remember one tour, uh, Les and Peko flew in a few days early uh, to spend some time in Osaka. And um, the idea was to meet up when the tour started. Uh, so I, you know, they, they, they came in all, all on their own and, and they went somewhere in Osaka. And, you know, Osaka is a huge place. It's the second biggest real city, I'd, I'd, I'd say, in Japan. And, you know, it's three million people in the city proper. And in the wider area, it's like 20 million. So it's oh, a wow. huge place. And then... Um, I'm in a bar on the outskirts of the city and this is, you know, I come in a few days early too and I'm, I'm nowhere near where the concert will be or where the band's hotel will be. And I, I'm, I'm sitting in this bar at maybe two in the morning and I'm talking to these Irish skills who are holidaying in Japan and they're asking okay. me, you know, why are you there? You know what you're doing? And I explain, oh, I'm, I'm organizing a concert. They say, you know, who's that for? And I say, oh, it's a band, very popular, you know, uh, called the Bay City Rollers. And one of the girls says, who's that guy? And I turn around and then les is outside the window at two in the morning just <laughs> smiling and waving at me you know i have no idea what he's doing in this totally random place in the city of you know three million people and i nearly fell off my chair it was uncanny you say the world basic rollers and there's les you know right, outside. Here. Yeah. And it, i think you have to say it three times like beetlejuice <laughs> that's it, that's it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and it turns out though that uh, that peko was actually from the exact area that wow. i was in and Les was jet lagged. He just obviously got in. So he'd gone out for a late night walk and was just, you know, wandering around the street and spotted me in this random bar, you know, from, from the street. Oh, and uh, you know, I said, yo, come, in, come inside, come inside. And you know, he was in fantastic form. You know, obviously, the Irish girls loved him because he's just got such a great way with people. And we yes. spent, you know, a couple of hours totally unplanned, just sitting there chatting together till this bar shut at five in the morning. Obviously, Les wasn't drinking or anything like that, but, you know, he was just jet lagged and, and he had, we had a, a great chat with these lovely, lovely uh, tourists. And it was yeah, totally random, but, you know, That's Les awesome. could be surprising and even magical like that at times. You know, just, just things like that would often just happen. Um, and you, you, you couldn't make it up, you know? Right. Yeah. That's great. Now, um, you talked um i've seen your your posts on facebook about the um the the book that you're doing and um it has to do a lot with the fact that you took pictures of him back in 2020 and i wanted to find out how did you come up with the idea about the book because maybe i don't know if all, everybody knows about the story how that came about well yeah i mean basically the to just, to just explain a bit about the photos, um, you know, it's we, we were we were um, we always shoot some photos during the tour, and usually it's to promote, you know, uh, the tour in the future. You know, next time mm -hmm. he's coming to Japan, we can release some, and newspapers will give us coverage if we can give them some some rare unseen photos. It's it's mm -hmm. it's how the promotion business works usually, 
Um, but this year was unusual because we did a lot of promotion photos, but actually we also agreed that we would do some some kind of um, professional photography photos for, how, how do you describe this? Like on a white background for, for making, um, like a studio shoot, you know, like a proper studio shoot. And we got this Japanese fashion photographer, uh, Kei Chinita, uh, to come in and, 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 and do this. And this is something we'd never done. Um, and yes, yeah, so we got, we had all of these, these photos taken. And I'll be honest, you know, when Les passed away, I, I, obviously I, I, the last thing I'm going to think about is my promotional photos and this, that, and the other. And I just totally forgot oh. about all that kind of stuff. It's, it, it, it wasn't on my mind. Um, but something which I, I, I was thinking about is always, you know, when Les passed away, um, I was thinking about Peko because I spent as much time with um, Peko as I did Les. He came on every single tour that, that he did. So I knew her very well. And um, his birthday was uh, the, day bef the day before mine, you know. I, I'm born on the 13th of November, Les is the 12th. So I could never forget Les's birthday ever. And um, I knew that would be a really sad and difficult day for Peko. You know, people obviously well, around the funeral, people are always in touch on those kind of times, but they don't always, you know, get in touch at later dates, you know, especially right. people, you know, it's just, especially people who are not fans, but people who are maybe had a professional or a working relationship or, you know, they they don't always get in touch on those times. It's, um, yeah. It gets quiet. It get to, exactly. And I thought, you know, I, it's going to be a tough day and I want to I want to send her something nice. If I could put something together, which would make her happy, you know, um, I could send a bunch of flowers, but I'd rather try and come up with something else. And, um, you know, I remembered, oh, we, we did these photos, you know, on, on the last tour. And I remembered that um, that even though it wasn't planned, Les had actually pulled Peko in front of the camera whilst we were doing this shoot. And he started like spinning her around and hugging each other Aww. and these really sweet pictures. Like, honestly, they're, they're, they're some of the most sweet pictures you'll ever see. Really heartwarming. And, and I thought to myself, wow, these, these pictures, this, this is a, I should print these out, make a little photo album and send them to her. Because this is the perfect thing to, to say, you know, remember the good times, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I, I went into my folders and started looking around saying, can I find those photos? And when I was digging through all the, the folders on my computer, I realized, you know, that there are actually like, I mean, how, how many? I mean, from the photo shoot, there must be easily 600 photos. From the live shows, there'll be over a, over a thousand or so. And I'm looking through all of these and going, oh, you know, I, I can't believe I, I, I have all these photos and I've never shared them with anyone and they're never going to see the light of day. And I thought, this is kind of sad because there's some beautiful photos. And so this idea that, you know, maybe other people would want to see these, you know, maybe the fans. And so the idea that maybe I could crowdfund the photo book started to form in my mind. And, um, you know, obviously I, I didn't just want to go ahead and do something like that. My relationship with uh, Peko is very important because I've known her for a long time. And so I thought, you know, I've got to ask Peko and his son, Jube, uh, how they feel about it, you know, that I wouldn't mm -hmm. just want to do it. And uh, they were kind enough to give it their blessing. And so I guess where I'm at now is just that this is why I'm crowdfunding it really, because, you know, I think they're great photos. I think it's a fantastic memory of Les. Some of the last pictures professionally ever taken of him, definitely for the photo shoot. And they show the many different sides of him, his fun character. Uh, there's a lot of him just being silly and messing around, dancing, you know, shouting really 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 fun photos and of course the photos of him and Peko and you know so I, I I you know I think they're great but it's really up to the fans to decide is this something we want because printing right. a photo book it's a really really not a cheap endeavor it's expensive to print a hardback full color A4 book so if fans want to see it you know I guess I'm here on this show and um, if I could have a direct word to your listeners, it would just be, you know, if you're interested, I beg you, please, you know, uh, please check out what we're doing. Visit the Kickstarter website where the, the campaign is. And if you like it, please show your support by pledging to buy a copy, you know, today, if possible, because um, the sooner we hit the target, uh, the hope is, is that I can probably, if we hit the target quick, I can get in touch with newspapers again, let more people know about it again. And, and I, mm -hmm. you know, my memory of Les is that I know Les like would like to be in the newspapers you know again he, you know he, he, it's important for you know his legacy to, to 
to keep yeah. on saying, you know, remember, remember the great things this guy did. Remember how much he was loved. And uh, yeah, that's 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 really where I am. Sorry for the ramble. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was awesome. <laughs> I, have, I have a question. You had mentioned yeah. a second photographer. So mm. you didn't take all of these. Did you take the... Oh, no, these are all, well, not all, but but the majority, the, the, the main content of the book, are, they're professional photographs. And this is the thing people have to realize. It's not just snapshots, personal snapshots over the years. The We have beautiful, the highest quality photographs taken by two uh, one was a, a live a live photographer photographing a live show and the second is a studio photographer who sh shoots you know models and uh pop stars celebrities that, that's what that's what their speciality is and then okay. on top of that we have some offstage candidates and those are the kind of photos that i would have taken um or or um maybe uh, the production manager she took quite a few photos and so right. it's all of these photos that we've got from over the years they complement it. You're yes. curating for this book. Sorry, you're curating all of these for the book. That that's right. That's yeah. right. Exactly. Um, what happens if you know the goal's not met? Not that that's likely. Are there no, any you... other plans, or will you just keep plugging along until you get there? Well, I mean, the, there's a there's a deadline, and I think from today, um, uh, well, actually, you should probably go on the site and have a look at what the deadline is. I'm not sure exactly when this goes out, so. Um, but it, it ends on the May 22nd. There's a deadline of May 22nd. And if there's not enough um, pledges by that point, if we don't hit the target, that's the nature of crowdfunding. We, nobody pays any money. Everyone keeps their money and we don't produce the book. Um, and, that, that, you know, if that happens, it, it's, it'll just be because probably it wasn't everyone's cup of tea, as we say in England. It wasn't what, what people, uh, people wanted to see. And, and, I, and I, I, I will respect that. But I... I really hope that um, that fans see uh, the chance to make a really special memory of Les, and uh, if they can show their support, I'd, I'd be you know eternally grateful. Now, as of today, are you? I think I saw last night that you were at least fifty percent funded. Is that? That's is right. It... I checked this morning. We're at fifty-two percent. Is is what what my computer oh, told me? Really? Yeah. So that's I mean, that, that's after five days, I think. So I'm really hopeful that we'll get there. But the truth is, is that with all of these kind of things, they tend to go really fast at the beginning, then sure. they slow down a bit. And so I think there's lots of people thinking, oh, I'll wait and see. I did get a, 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 I get lots of lovely messages from lots of lovely people showing their support. I did get a message this morning from a, a lady telling me, oh, I'm a little bit concerned because it says on the site that if if um, that there's no guarantee the book will be made. And so I think some people, it's a new thing, crowdfunding. You know, they're not yes. familiar with the system. Okay. So there's a little bit of, um, what's the word, uh, cautiousness or sure. you know, waiting to see how it goes. And she said to me, oh, if the book gets its funding, then I'll put the money down. Oh, and, uh, yeah. yeah. But I, 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 I haven't mailed it yet. I'll, I'll, it's, it's on my to-do list. I'll mail it a bit later because uh, I had to do this interview with you, lovely, you lovelies. And uh, basically, I, I, you know, I, I, I would say to her or anyone else who was concerned about that, the way the website works is that unless the targets hit, we, we don't get your money and, you know, you keep your money in that situation. It's a bit complicated because sometimes you do see a charge on your card, but that's just because the, the Kickstarter company wants to make sure you actually have the money you promise. Because sure. if you just said, oh, you know, I've, yeah, I'm definitely going to put, you know, a hundred pounds. And at the end you had no money in your bank account, then we wouldn't get the money. So they do this thing where they reserve the money and they hold it but they don't actually take it out of your bank account. So sure, a, that makes well, sense. Yeah, technical technical stuff, you know, which is a bit a bit scary for, for, for people. It's a new thing. So I really appreciate that people are are, um, are trying something new and learning something new to make this happen. Oh, definitely. Yeah, and this, this is going to help them understand it more. And the two important things with the fandom is you know, how this works and what are you going to do with my money and that you have the blessing of the family. That they're, right. that they're yeah. behind that. So those are two very key elements and you've Absolutely. covered them both. If I could add something else to that, it would be that, um, you know, you know, another risk which exists in, in crowdfunding is that if the person who's putting it together doesn't really understand how to produce the product or doesn't have experience producing products, that's a that is a risk. So, for example, let's say I came along and I said, oh, I, I need uh, I only need two people to produce this book that's somebody who doesn't understand how much money it costs to produce mm -hmm. this kind of product. And sure. that's risky, but we have a very healthy budget. And that's why some people go, it's a lot of money you're asking for, you know, 
uh, 55 pounds per book. But that's because, you know, I know the costs, what it costs to produce this book, what it costs to, to pay a graphic designer to do the, the kind of loving care that this book needs. Uh, the printing of books, hardback books is so expensive. And then packaging, the shipping, all of this kind of stuff, uh, because actually shipping in the UK is included in the price, but people outside, it, we ship all over the world. That's an additional cost, which you pay separately. Yes. But, um, but that's the point, you know, I've, I've got a long experience running budgets, long experience putting things together from scratch. So um, I hope that gives people confidence, you know, like Les had confidence in me and um, that I know what I'm doing and that, you know, um, if we hit the target, it's definitely going to happen. Um, and, uh, and I promise it will, because unless I, unless I, unless I get killed by a bus. In that case, in that case, I'll tell, I'll tell my brother that he has to sort it out, you know, but. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, um, Bay City Roller Fan Events are proud to be supporting this, this campaign. Thank you so much. I really, I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate you letting me, letting me be on the show and, um, and, and ramble away so much. No. <laughs> You we love gamblers. <laughs> we do. We do. You you did awesome, and I I'm happy that we can help promote what what we know is going to be a beautiful keepsake for Bay City Roller fans. And we wish you all the best, Sam. And we hope that uh, before May 22nd that you reach your goal. Thanks so much. I I, I really um I really thank all the fans for their support and your support. And uh, hope together that we can make it and, and make this great this great photo book memory of Les. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure to speak with you. Thanks so much. It's nice to meet you, Sam. Good great luck. You. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, Sam's a lovely guy. That was so unexpected. I mean, not that he's not a lovely guy, but he was so interesting to talk to. I could have kept going. He um, really was, yeah. Yeah, what a nice guy. Um, and we hope that all Roller fans will support this campaign. Bay City Roller Fan Events have supported it, and we encourage all to do the same. And if you want to support, um, the link will be provided at the end of this podcast, and we'll also drop a link in the description. Or you can just search for it. Um, it's in Kickstarter, so kickstarter.com. So we yes. hope you'll all support it. I think if you even if on Kickstarter, if you simply put in Les McEwen, you'll find it. And the other nice thing about Sam is he did mention to us at some point that, you know, fans actually reached out to him with questions. He is so good about getting back to you and answering any questions you might have about this. So um, yeah. we, we encourage very you. Trans yeah, very transparent about this whole project. Absolutely. We love that. Mm -hmm. Well, um, we hope everyone enjoys listening to him as much as we enjoy talking to him. So um, until next time, you know what we say around here. What do we say, Laura? Keep on rolling. All right. <laughs> <laughs>